Hi guys. I don't normally do videos like this on my channel, but because it's something that's been getting a lot of attention lately, uh, I thought that I should do a video to address some of these things. If you've been following me on Twitter, you probably noticed me tweeting a lot about hashtag change the channel, which has to do with Channel Awesome, That Guy With The Glasses, or Nostalgia Critic, which is a site that I used to make videos for. I don't know how many of you who are following me aren't aware of my affiliation with That Guy With The Glasses or Channel Awesome or what they are. Uh, I imagine a lot of you are, but if you aren't, Channel Awesome is a video aggregate site. They have lots of different contributors who produce videos for them, and I used to be part of that. And we had a falling out, a, a pretty public falling out, uh, about two, three years ago in 2015. And recently, myself and about 20 other producers from the site put together a Google document talking about our experiences there, which were largely really negative. And I'll get into that in a little bit. But before I really dig in, I want to say thank you for Channel Awesome giving me an audience, for them giving me so many lifelong friends. There's so many people that I met there that are going to be my friends for the rest of my life. I met my boyfriend through that site. There are memories there that I wouldn't take back for the world. Uh, so there are so many great memories associated with being with Channel Awesome. So when it started out, there was at least an illusion that they cared about the producers there. There were problems like a lot of websites have or a lot of businesses have. Um, that's just, that it comes with the territory. So you expect that these things will smooth out over time. And instead they just got worse. There was this long history of not communicating with us, uh, bullying us, patronizing us, not caring about their producers. And there's lots of serious allegations in this document. Some of them are less serious than others, but all of them are legitimate grievances. And they center around primarily Mike Mashad, who is the CEO of the company, and Doug and Rob Walker. And I don't want to be too repetitious and go over everything that's in the document. So uh, if you want to read it yourself, uh, it's linked on my Twitter. It's not very hard to find. But the whole thing is well over 70 pages now. Uh, we've updated it with a couple other people that wanted to add their piece. But I did want to give people an update on what's been going on since and, and how this all came about. One of the biggest misconceptions that I've seen about this whole thing is that we were paid employees and we weren't. We did it all for free. It was a symbiotic relationship. You know, they would give us exposure and we would give them traffic for our videos and they would get ad revenue from people who clicked on our videos on the site. This includes the anniversaries. We did those for free. Uh, we were paid to fly out, but we were not given any compensation. And in fact, in the contracts, which was the only thing we had contracts for, we were told we had to give over our crossovers to them to help recoup costs. So not only were we doing this movie for free, we were taking time out of our work to make these videos for them. We were taking time out of our rest during the production to film them. And Mike still told us constantly how great it was that he never took a cut of our revenue from our videos. They got money from us embedding our videos on their site, not hosting them, embedding them. And he thought that it was so generous of them not to take a cut of our money. Let me just reiterate about the anniversaries. We did not make any money off of the DVDs. That was all them. In fact, they didn't give us the DVDs in some cases. I never received a copy of To Boldly Flee. So while they were concerned with making money off of our crossovers, they couldn't be bothered to give the people in the movie copies of the movie. And we had tried talking to them several times. It's not like this just popped up overnight. In 2013, we came up with a list of producer grievances and gave it to them. And they answered these in a text file. I, I put it online. And we had group calls where we talked about these issues and they promised that they would change and address some of these things. And they didn't. They broke every single promise every time. You probably noticed from the things that I've written about this that I have a huge problem, not just with Mike Mashad, but with Rob Walker and with Doug Walker, because they are complicit in this. And I know a lot of people want to believe that they're not involved or that they don't know about this stuff because they make videos that they like and they are nice in the videos. And 
They're not monsters all the time. They were nice to me at times. But there were times when they said some really hurtful things and did some hurtful things. And they were part of decisions that affected us. There was a very specific incident when I came to Chicago to film the crossover for A Talking Cat with Doug. And while I was there, I shot his talk show, Shut Up and Talk. And when I was on that set, Mike Michaud waited until everyone else left and cornered me and aggressively asked me why I had so many mid-rolls on my videos. And he was saying that it was causing people to turn on ad block and he'd left up comments that were mean as a hint to me instead of just coming to me about it. And whatever you want to say about the mid-rolls, the way that he handled this was really just atrocious and it made me really uncomfortable. And I cried in the bathroom in the studio because I was so upset over this. And the only person around afterwards was Doug. So I came to Doug and I told him what happened and he said that he would look into it. And the next thing that happened was he and Mashad, uh, Doug was in this call, called me up to tell me that they were limiting the mid-rolls. Uh, they were deciding what we were going to do with our videos. And the things that Mashad did were never addressed. And in the document, you can see other things where they were involved. So it's not just this. So all of them are complicit in this. And if you read the document, you'll see that about 99% of the problems are from Mike Mashad. He's a terrible manager and he's a bully and a misogynist and he just should not be in this position of power. So a lot of people are asking, why are you talking about this now? Why wasn't this brought up before? Well, for a lot of people, that guy with the glasses was all there was at the time. When we started, uh, you know, in, in early 2010, uh, YouTube was not a great place to go with our kinds of content. They were a lot more stringent with their rules about usage of clips. And it was just really difficult to try and make a living that way. So a lot of us were on Blip TV and Blip was not a great place to search for videos. So you had to be embedded on a popular site and that guy with the glasses was one of them. If you spoke up about this, you were kicked off and you just disappeared. You didn't have anywhere else to go. So a lot of us didn't say anything for a long time. And around the time when Patreon came along and when we started putting our videos on YouTube, they didn't have any leverage on us anymore. No one had any reason to stay. So a lot of people now are finding their voices because of this. As for what happened with me, uh, it was very public. Uh, in 2015, I was kicked off of the site because I called them out on their hypocrisy with Patreon. They were telling us that we couldn't promote it, uh, that we couldn't have links for it. And eventually they conceded that we can put bumpers in the videos about them. Uh, but they didn't tell us about the links. They weren't communicative about what we could do. So when I told them that the thing that they told me about adding links was that it was a slap to the face to fans, uh, that it was e-begging, I asked for an apology because the way that they handled it was really poor. And Mike was really standing his ground on this. They never admit any fault in anything. And he asked me if I could be in a call. And I said no, because I was very heated. I didn't want to get into a conversation in that state of mind. And I went to go film something. And a couple hours later, he and Doug tried to get me into a Skype call to discuss this, presumably to say what they were going to say anyway. And 15 minutes later, they tell me because I'm ignoring them that they are taking me off the site and my stuff was immediately removed. So essentially what they told me was they were letting me go because I wasn't at the computer for 15 minutes. So when all of this happened, I left the site and some other people had left the site, Phelan left the site, there was a whole mass exodus. And we did posts about this, I blogged about this. I told everyone exactly what happened and my experiences on the site and some people were really upset about this and some producers were really upset about this. And eventually people just sort of forgot. And you can't just keep bringing this up constantly. So I stopped talking about it because eventually it just starts feeling like you're the old man yelling at a cloud, you know? And I, I didn't like the person that I was becoming. I didn't like being angry and bitter about this all the time. So I just stopped. And this kept seeping into my life in the strangest of places. You know, I kept seeing Channel Awesome everywhere. And, it, and it's really, 
There are some obvious places, like uh, you can't avoid that your friends do crossovers with them or you see posts about it. And that's something that is my problem, not theirs. But then Channel Awesome would start appearing in other places. You know, I'd be at a wedding and someone would be name dropping them to me. I would be at conventions and people would want to talk about them to me. Uh, people would quote Doug at me. Uh, I would have emails in my inbox from apps trying to get me to join up and saying, look, we have the Nostalgia Critic. And I was just so sick of feeling like I was trapped under Channel Awesome's umbrella. It felt like I was back in 2010. And it, it just suffocated me. And a lot of people would assume that Doug and I are friends and they would talk about him to me. And one day in mid-March, I'd just gotten one too many of these things. Someone uh, asked me about Doug on Twitter. And so uh, for the first time in a while, I said something. I said, look, he treated us awfully. I don't like him. And I started talking about some of the stuff that they'd done. And I didn't expect anything to come from this. But I think at this point in time, it was just the right time for a lot of other people to air their grievances. So after I posted this, uh, Pushing Up Roses, Sarah said something. And then Mars Girl said something, Kaylin said something, and then Lewis said something. And I think really, Kaylin and Lewis were the people that really caused it to gain traction because a lot of people heard me or heard individuals scattered throughout these years um, and just assumed it was some sour grapes. But when you hear so many people talking about their experiences, it quickly becomes clear that this is a problem with the company. So Kaylin and Lewis and Suede and a bunch of other people just started talking until eventually there was around 30 of us on Twitter just sharing stories nonstop. I think it was around 48 hours where we were continually talking about stuff. The thread just was not stopping. But Twitter is not a great place to compile a lot of things. There's lots of different uh, threads and branches and people just couldn't follow what was going on. So we got a group together and we decided that we were gonna put this all in one place that we could direct people to. And eventually we came to the consensus we were going to create a Google Doc. And that way we could have a place to direct people to, to say, this is what happened. Be cautious with this company and don't let them take advantage of you. There's lots of people that their dream is to be on that site. And a lot of companies will want to take advantage of you. And I think uh, a lot of our testimonies, and mine especially, do have personal things in them. So you might find some of it petty. And that's fair enough if you don't agree with everything that I've said, but please try to take into consideration what everyone else has said. Um, there's lots of really consistent problems throughout all of these testimonies. Once this document got out, I didn't really expect the attention that everything would get. Um, so many people were talking about it and people started making videos about it. We started getting contacted by the press. They were posting articles about it. There was a mass exodus of producers from the site. Uh, right now, I think they have 13 people left and in March they had 40. That is a lot of people. And I, I just want to address quickly the people who have left the site. Uh, I don't want anyone to harass them. And I apologize for the fallout that's come to them. Um, this includes Tamara and Malcolm because they are not involved with the management in the company. They have been nothing but nice to me. Um, and I want to extend some encouragement to the people that have left because I know that it is not easy to sever ties. And there are some people that are not in the same financial situation, don't have the same kind of following as me or anyone else. And it's really difficult to sever ties, especially if you've been with them for so long. So I just want to wish them nothing but success. Some of them I know, some of them I don't. Uh, I just hope that they find their happiness and their footing and that great things happen for them. I think really the impetus for all of the people leaving though was not the document, it was Channel Awesome's response. They posted on Twitter a text response to all of this, and their wording was, we sincerely regret you felt that way. And what that did was either alert people who weren't aware of it to what's going on, or alienate people who did know what was going on. 
uh, it backfired on them. I've seen next to no people supporting them because of that, because it, it was a non-apology. It backfired. They were placing the blame on the people who were wronged. And that's been their typical response to a lot of things. They, they never admit culpability. And when they posted that response, a lot of people that were still on the site who were hoping that maybe this time they would change, realized that they weren't. And that was the response that they got. They've been asking them uh, in the group chats on Skype, which is their method of communication, they've been asking them to talk to them, to tell them what's going on. And they've given them nothing. They've given them the response that they gave us on Twitter. They have had 10 years to make things right. And they have made no indication that they're going to make an active change. And I hope that eventually they do. I hope that if there's anyone still left on the site, that they treat them better. The people who are or were on the site are incredibly talented, hardworking individuals. And they deserve to be treated better. All I've really wanted from this was a sincere apology. That's what I want. I want them to admit that they did wrong. I know that I get very heated about things, but I hope that some positive change comes from this. I don't know what else I can really add to this. Um, I'm not sure where things are going to go. I just want to end by saying thank you to everyone who has supported all of the producers in this, who has said something, who has listened. There is a tweet that I got in the middle of all of this that said, I have always believed you. And it just made me want to cry. Um, so I just want to say thank you to that person and thank you to everyone who has believed us. So that's all I really wanted to say. Thank you. Truly and genuinely, thank you.